Alright guys, so today we're going to count down some of the most powerful trinkets that will dramatically boost your DPS in a raiding environment that are coming very soon in later phases, but I have also included some cheeky, very underrated utility trinkets. So we're going to be covering trinkets that will drop in Alduar, Trial of the Grand Crusader and Ice Crown Citadel, and even Ruby Sanctum. Our first trinket on the list is the Flare of the Heavens, a spellcaster trinket that drops from General Vizak's 25-man hard mode, which means it's one of the highest item level trinkets that you can get in this phase. It's a fairly simple trinket, but very, very powerful, and better than other trinkets due to the raw stats. It has 120 crit, a proc effect of 850 spell power for 10 seconds, with only a 45 second internal cooldown. Most casters will still pair this with a very overpowered illustration of a dragon soul from Obsidian Sanctum 25 man, since that trinket is still so powerful. In Orduar, Mela DPS will be aiming to get the Comet's Trail, which is essentially an upgrade from the Meteorite Whetstone from King Yumeron in Heroic Utgard Pinnacle. Comet drops from the Agalon the Observer bonus boss of Orduar. This boss can only be unlocked with a quest obtained inside of the instance from the Iron Council Encounter. This will send you on a small quest chain to kill more bosses inside Orduar before you can finally get the Celestial planetarium key to unlock Agalon's boss room. The trinket has 240 raw attack power and a haste proc of 726 for 10 seconds and this will be perfect for Unholy Death Knight's opener to optimize their gargoyle damage obviously and many Mela DPS will still continue to pair this with a Dark Moon card. Now with some other DPS out there including the Hunter that scale extremely well with armor penetration, so they prefer to obtain Mijolner's, if I pronounce that correctly, Mijolner's Runestone from Forim on 10-man hard mode. This has 102 crit chance, but a proc effect of 665 armor penetration for 10 seconds is a great drink of it literally activates specs that have previously been behind the other DPS in phase one, so obviously we're talking about the combat rogue, Fury Warrior, Feral Druid, and a Marksman Hunter. Not saying that they're really bad in phase one, but you know, items like this trinket buff their DPS dramatically. Along with other things, I mean, I'm not saying this trinket, oh, you get this trinket and there you go, these specs are viable because obviously the Marksman Hunter, for instance, still needs that Skyforge crossbow, but it's a big piece in the puzzle. By the way guys, subscribers of my channel get access to some really great subscriber only content like for instance a really quick gold guide where you can make 500 gold per day in a space of like quarter of an hour and I also have a weak horror and add on guide for every single class in the game so be sure to check out my subscriber only video, check the description there for more content also. Now we move on to the Trial of a Grand Crusader, with Death's Choice or Death's Verdict if you play Horde, a melee trinket that drops from the Twin Valkyrie Encounter that provides 288 attack power and a proc to either increase your strength or agility depending on which is obviously the highest stat, so that lasts for 15 seconds, and it is a very very high proc chance. Because this is a trinket that dynamically increases either your strength or agility, it means it's sought after by every single melee DPS in the game and hunters, so it will probably be the most contested item of this phase. The most contested caster trinket of this phase will be Reign of the Living or Reign of the Dead if you play Horde. For some reason in this phase, the loot and tier sets have different names depending on your faction. The tier sets will also actually look different. Most casters want this trinket, it drops from the last boss, Anubarak. It has 168 spell power and a unique equip effect. Every time you deal a crit with a non-dot ability, like for instance a Shadow Bolt, you gain a Shard of Flame. And when you get three shards, you will fire a Pillar of Flame for around 2000 damage. And this can only happen every two seconds, so it basically is a buffed version of a Lightning capacitor from Ilhoof in Karazhan. Now the damage weirdly has no visual effect in the game, you just see the damage happen like in floating combat text. It doesn't scale with spell power but it does have a chance of crit based on your actual crit on your character. The damage can also be increased by percentile damage increasing buffs and debuffs 
and it works off AoE abilities. Plus, Fire Mage talents that increase fire damage will increase the damage of the proc, so it will very likely be Fire Mage priority loot. Especially as you really need to start gearing up your Fire Mages in preparation for Heroic Ice Crown Citadel. Trial of the Grand Crusader also drops some great utility trinkets for the tank like the Juggernaut's Vitality. This has a total of 216 stamina on it, so it's going to increase your HP pool by over 2000. And the on use effect will increase your health by 5000, so that can be very useful for surviving big damage mechanics. It does share a cooldown with other Battlemaster effects, so other trinkets that increase your health. And you also can't equip two of these anymore. That's a recent change that's added in Raffle Lich King Classic. So it's very likely that tanks will pair this with the Heart of Iron from Old War, since that has a nice amount of stamina on it too, with that really good 432 dodge rating for 20 seconds buff. And now for the most iconic, most powerful, and most desired trinket in the game, the Deathbringer's Will. This is a trinket that drops from Deathbringer Sawfang and has a heroic version of 277 item level. Every non-caster spec wants this item. Unfortunately, you can't double equip these because in ICC, Blizzard made a change where you can't do that. So the heroic version has 167 base armor penetration with this unique effect that will actually transform your character into either a Varikrul, Wolvar, Tonka, Iron Dwarf, Tuska, or Gorlock for 30 seconds. And that's actually how long the buff does last for. And the buff changes depending on your class. So for instance, a Death Knight will either gain 700 strength, 700 haste, or 700 crit for a full 30 seconds, whereas a Hunter will gain 700 agility, 700 crit, or 700 arm penetration. The only downside to this trinket is when in PvP, and you need to mount up, the proc effect will actually prevent you from mounting up, so you'll have to make a cancel or a macro to remove the buffs. Casters will instead be desperate for Syndragosa's trinket, the Flat Tree of the Nameless Lich. This has 172 spell power and a proc that procs off your dot damage instead of direct damage. And if you think about it, every single caster apart from the Arcane Mage has some form of dot, and the proc is 1207 spell power for a full 20 seconds with a 30% proc chance, so every caster apart from the Arcane Mage will want this item. I've also read that it will proc off Druid's tier 10 4p set bonus that causes your crit to deal extra damage as a dot for 4 seconds. Now we have another utility tank trinket, Syndragosa's Flawless Fang. It has 258 stamina with an on-use effect that increases your resistances to all schools of magic by 268 for 10 seconds. With resistance buffs provided by the raid, like Druid's Mark of the Wild, or your own, you know, if you're playing a paladin, obviously it will be your own resistance aura, this will prevent 30% to 60% of magic damage and can prevent more with Aura Mastery in the ballpark of 40 to 70% of total damage. Obviously, there's a little RNG involved when it comes to magic resistance stats, but it will definitely reduce magic damage taken and has the most amount of stamina on an item in the game, basically until Cataclysm turns up. Which, by the way, as I was making this video, has more or less been confirmed, so stay tuned for tomorrow when I make a little video about that. And lastly, we have one of the highest item level trinkets in the game of 284, the Glowing Twilight Scale, probably the most powerful healer trinket in the game. It's a shame you get this so late in the game, when you very likely have Ice Crown Citadel on the farm. It has a very unique effect, very similar to Glyph of Holy Light. Your direct heals cause the target to heal themselves for 402 points each second for 6 seconds, but it also affects everyone within 10 yards, so it's a free AoE hot on your healing spells, and it will actually pop off your AoE healing spells, so it is ridiculously overpowered. I have no idea whether this also causes the legendary mace from Ordoir to proc its effect, only time will tell, maybe someone can tell me in the comment section. Just before we head off guys, please do check out my second channel, I'm really trying to get to 1000 subscribers. I'll also very soon be making a video about the new Harry Potter RPG on that channel. Anyway guys, my name is Metagoblin, to my next video, ciao.